In this comprehensive examination, we delve into the methodology employed at Johnny's Loft to highly motivate both female and male pigeons to compete in arduous races spanning distances of 500 to 1,000 miles over a minimum duration of 12 weeks, and often longer. Referred to as the roundabout system, it enables fanciers to race both female and male pigeons, provided they possess sufficient space in the loft, however, distinguishes itself by segregating yearling birds from older ones throughout the entire year due to the distinct racing schedules they follow, as well as the varying dietary requirements of the two groups. Yearlings partake in races of up to 360 miles and do not necessitate as substantial a diet as the marathon racers. Nonetheless, both sets of birds undergo similar training and racing protocols, which acquaints the yearlings with the expectations for the subsequent years of racing. The loft is designed in a rudimentary manner, comprising two sections, one for the male pigeons, housing 20 nesting boxes, and the other for the female pigeons, equipped with 21 V-shaped perches. At Johnny's Loft, the team consists of a maximum of 20 male pigeons and 20 female pigeons, as well as the same number in the yearlings' loft. While the actual count of birds may occasionally deviate from the specified limit, ensuring adequate space without overcrowding is vital. Overcrowding has emerged as a prevalent issue in modern-day lofts, leading to numerous health problems afflicting both the birds and fanciers, which, in turn, contributes to high mortality rates among young and adult pigeons. After selecting the team for the upcoming season, at Johnny's Loft, we pair the pigeons together for a mere four days in January, primarily to acclimatize them to their respective nesting boxes and sections. This initiates the roundabout process for all the birds. At Johnny's Loft, the teams are released daily, regardless of the prevailing weather conditions. Although we acknowledge that this may not be feasible in all regions due to bird-of-prey populations, we experience minimal losses, usually limited to the late-bred birds that lack the experience to cope with predatory birds. Each day, the female pigeons are released first from both the yearling's loft and the section designated for older hens. While the female pigeons are engaged in flight, the male pigeons are temporarily relocated to the female section, awaiting their turn. The duration of the female pigeon's flight is inconsequential, what matters is their immediate disappearance upon release, even if it lasts a mere five minutes. This disappearance signifies their eagerness to fly and, consequently, indicates their robust health. Upon returning and being prepared to re-enter the loft, the female pigeons must exclusively enter the male section and subsequently proceed to their respective nest boxes. They are not fed at this point, and the section is subsequently closed to allow the male pigeons to be released. The same principle applies to them, they must vanish from sight for at least 5 minutes. Meanwhile, the adjoining flap leading to the female section is opened, and the females are summoned to feed in their own compartment. Initially, this transition may be slow and unfamiliar for the new occupants, but after 3 or 4 days, they become well acquainted with the expectations, resulting in a seamless routine. The male pigeons are then granted entry into their section and provided with food. After 10 minutes, any remaining food is removed, and the loft and nest boxes are cleaned. This practice enables me to assess the male pigeon's well-being and determine if they have obtained sufficient rest overnight. An excellent indicator for novice starters is when the droppings are scattered all over the nest box, implying that the bird is not obtaining the necessary rest and necessitates observation to identify the underlying cause, such as the presence of another male pigeon or mice. The entire procedure is repeated in the evening, provided there is adequate daylight. Another distinctive practice at Johnny's Loft is leaving the female pigeons in the male section overnight once a week, while the male pigeons occupy the female section. This strengthens the attachment to the nest box, and it is truly astonishing to witness the hen's determination in defending her territory. Towards the end of February, the teams are paired together and permitted to raise a single brood of offspring. Once the juveniles are 14 to 16 days old or when the male pigeon begins displaying courting behavior, the female pigeon is relegated to her designated section during the day. This is where the fancier's dedication and time investment increase significantly. At approximately 4 o'clock, the female pigeons are released, and the male pigeons are directed into the female section. The females are then admitted into the male section and remain there until 9 o'clock the following morning. I adopt this approach to preserve the strong bond between the pigeons and their respective sections, as this attachment and loyalty to the nesting area significantly contribute to their racing performance. Moreover, it enables the feeding responsibilities for the young birds to be shared between both parents. When the juveniles reach 24 days of age, they are all separated from their parents, and the birds resume the roundabout routine for the remainder of the training period leading up to the first race. Importantly, there should be no contact between the sexes until the evening of basketing for the initial race. The racing procedure differs between long-distance races and short training races. The short races. For the short races, basketing takes place on Friday evening. 
Throughout the day, the birds remain within their respective sections, refraining from loft flying. Approximately one hour before departure to the club, the pigeons are allowed to intermingle in the male section. There is no fixed duration for their togetherness. I observe their behavior and wait until they have settled in their nesting bowls. As a general guideline, this interaction does not exceed 10 minutes. Subsequently, the male pigeons are basketed ahead of the females and proceed to the club. I always strive to avoid overcrowding the baskets, considering potential heat and the possibility of an extended wait, during which the birds would expend additional energy attempting to regulate their body temperature and avoid excessive contact with one another. Upon return from the race, the pigeons are granted approximately an hour to remain together before being returned to their respective female section. The cycle restarts in preparation for the subsequent week's race. This system remains in place throughout the entire 12 race season for the yearling pigeons. As an additional note, the female section features metal grills on the floor, effectively preventing hens from pairing up. The distance races. Once the long distance races commence, following roughly four weeks of short training races, a two week period of rest and build up ensues. This phase serves to reaffirm the roundabout system, incorporating loft flying twice a day, as performed at the beginning of the year. This routine is sustained until the day before basketing, usually a Wednesday. The female pigeons are then granted access to their nest boxes in the male section for a 24 hour period. This represents an eagerly anticipated interlude for the birds, and they savor every precious second spent together. On Thursday morning, the male pigeons are basketed first, followed by the females. The birds are released only after the male pigeons have vacated the loft, without any specific rationale other than personal preference. If it works, don't change it. Following the race, the pigeons spend a few hours in each other's company before returning to their respective sections, commencing another two-week period of rest and reinforcement. Birds following this system at Johnny's Loft engage in races exceeding 550 miles four or five times over a span of 12 weeks. As evident, this methodology is not excessively intricate, but it does require substantial effort and meticulous planning on the part of the fancier. As I have mentioned in previous discussions, the fancier must exert as much, if not more, effort than the birds in order to achieve commendable results. There are many reasons to buy my racing pigeon method. Here are some of the best reasons. You will get excellent results, it's a very simple system to use, it's affordable, I have had over 400 first prize winners, it's adaptable to any situation. You can use it with any racing method, natural, widowhood, young birds, it's a very effective method. There is no need to spend a lot of money on fancy pigeon products, it's a reliable system and it is foolproof to use. Professional athletes, race horses, take the same products, there is science behind this not just hearsay, it is all to do with red blood cells and oxygen in the blood, without that a pigeon will not race well, or an athlete will not win a race, if he has low oxygen in his blood, the above is fact and is 100% science. There are a few things you can do to improve your chances of winning at racing pigeons. One of the most important things is to learn as much as you can about the sport. You'll need to know the different types of pigeons, how to train them, and how to race them. Another key factor is practice. You'll need to be able to fly your pigeons competently in order to win races. And, of course, you'll need to have the funds to invest in racing pigeons and other racing equipment.